This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So I recently tore my uh, I, I recently tore my Achilles tendon while I was skateboarding, uh, but I can walk again um, awkwardly. So, but I thought I would celebrate being able to walk again today by making a flipbook about skateboarding. All right, today I'm gonna make a flip book of an ollie, which is uh, probably the most essential trick you can learn as a skateboarder. Also, a quick reminder, you might notice I've got some mail piling up behind me. Um, those are some of the entries that I've gotten for the flip book contest this year. If you haven't sent your flip book in, just make sure it gets to me by December 14th, 2020. So you've still got a little time, just get that in the mail. I'll put a link to the contest info down below. Okay, the ollie. So I'm gonna do an animation of an ollie using a stick figure. Uh, the ollie, again, it's probably the most essential trick you can learn as a skateboarder because it's really the basis for so many other tricks. To animate an ollie, I found some really good video reference on a YouTube channel called Skate Sage. Uh, I love this guy's channel and I really like the way he thinks. If you guys want to learn to do an ollie yourself, Skate Sage's tutorial is probably the best and most detailed tutorial I've seen. So um, so I'll put a link down below. Go over to his channel and if you're interested in learning ollies or any other like skateboard tricks, uh, subscribe to his channel. So I'm using Skate Sage's video as reference I'm, and I'm following it as closely as I can using a stick figure. Uh, the key part of doing an ollie is popping the board up, taking your weight off of it, and then guiding its momentum with your feet. I learned to ollie when I was a kid, but uh, I could only do it while at a standstill. I finally did my first rolling ollie when I was about 30 years old. Anyway, um, one thing I want to show you guys in regards to animation uh, as, as I do this is how sometimes it's important to exaggerate your animation compared to real life. So since I'm using video reference here, I also want to think about uh, how I might want to exaggerate what I'm seeing. So I'm going to make this flip book twice and I'll show you the difference, show you what I'm talking about. So I've gone through this reference video frame by frame. I followed his poses exactly for each frame. And then when I flip through it, uh, it looks pretty cool and it matches. But for animation, it doesn't have as much energy or impact as it could. And that's where you want to think about exaggeration and timing. So first timing, I'm going to go through and just try pulling out some pages to see if I can make it feel a little more snappy. You can fiddle around with this um, yourself. Just try removing a frame or two, see if it feels better. Um, if you pull a frame out, just ask yourself, do I miss it or does it feel better without it? I do this in stop motion all the time. I'll, f I'll finish a shot and then I'll go back through and maybe pull a frame out somewhere just to add a little bit of snap to a movement if it needs it. Okay, so this is feeling a little bit better, um, but it, it still feels reserved. It feels like it should be bigger, more exaggerated. So what I'm doing now is I'm tracing over this whole flip book. Basically, I'm going to make it over again, but I'm going to take the poses a bit further. All right, so here up front, I'm taking his pose lower to give more anticipation. And then when he jumps up, adding a little bit more stretch. And then taking him higher up in the air once he's in the air. And then uh, I'll try to add a little more impact when he hits the ground. Okay, and so now if we look at these side by side, uh, you can see the difference. The first one is actually more accurate to real life but the energy of the second one feels better for this type of animation. Now, the second one, it, it's not perfect, and I, I think it could still be better. I could do it again and probably make it stronger, um, but you get the point. When you're animating, be thinking about whether you should exaggerate something or tweak your timing um, just to make it feel better in animated form. All right, and now for the final flip, um, I did a whole montage of other skateboard animation and I added it to the front of this flipbook. Uh, it's inspired by lots of really cool slow motion footage I found, so I kind of wanted to keep that slow motion vibe. Uh, anyway, here it is. Um, let me know what you think. Oh,
All right, well, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Um, I also shot a stop motion version of this flipbook that I'll show you at the very end of the video. Um, this was a really fun one to make. And you know, once my leg finishes healing, it's gonna be really nice when I can finally ride my own skateboard again. Um, I wanna tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people where you can explore new skills and get lost in creativity. There are classes on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. I'm taking this class right now called Find Your Style, Five Exercises to Unlock Your Creative Identity by Andy J. Pizza. And it's a really helpful class on finding your own unique creative style. These are some excellent animation classes. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule, and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. All right, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium memberships so you can explore your creativity. So jump down below and click that link. Thanks again to Skillshare, and thanks to you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.